to take hands. a video of giving a cucumber a hand job. Right? That's nothing. Eh, that's kind of still something. Well, I've always said that if you can think of it, somebody's <laughs> into it, right? So if you can think of it in your head, like. Listen, have you gone down the porn rabbit holes? You have. You know I have. <laughs> you know I have. You know I have. Can you imagine that if you, one of your followers from OnlyFans was like, I want to see a prolapsed asshole. And you're like, done. Let's do it. Done. Well, $20,000 I later. I can't do a prolapse. You're fucking. A- <laughs> oh, I'm figuring out how to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Figure I'm, it out. I'll figure out how to. Dan always says he's like, Jesse, that's an injury. That's like an injury you can't come back. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. like once you do that, once you. You can't. You can't put the. Rabbit I have a friend who doesn't it. have a pro. She doesn't. Ha- I have a friend who d- she doesn't have like a prolapse asshole, but she kind of has like a constant. Um, what's it called? Hemorrhoid. Oh, a little bit. Like she always has a constant hemorrhoid. Like, does she tell you about this? Yeah, she's very honest with me about oh, okay. it. Okay. And so what I would do is if an oh, <laughs> if an OnlyFans guy was like, "Hey, I want to see a pink oh, fucking sock," like- I would get I get my friend <laughs> and be like, "Give me a picture of your." Hey, butthole. look, this guy and needs a prolapse. I'll split the money with you. I would, yeah, maybe look or ten <laughs> percent. I think you guys, it's going to be a running theme for us <laughs> that we're going to. Always, I think, once a show, contemplate an OnlyFans. And maybe not do it, but we're always going to talk it through, I think, and be like, should we? <laughs> should we do it? Just like feet. <laughs> just maybe. like a finger. Somebody's got to be into me just like almost picking my nose, but not doing it, right? <laughs> like the anticipation of it. Can you imagine picking your nose OnlyFans like pictures? Yeah. There's- that's the only thing I can imagine doing. I just got it. You know what I'm gonna do? What? Diapers. Oh my gosh! You've already got you've already got one fan, right? Got one fan. Hit him back up <laughs> and go go listen about. You can pay me a thousand dollars a month for. Diaper I think pictures. I might be into it. <laughs> I have an OnlyFans. Check me out. Oh my gosh! Now listen. I don't know if this is appropriate for our, for our fun little thing we have at the end of the show, but whatever. It's just going to be something well, that we talk about. Here's a lesson that you'll learn here. If you want it, you make it happen. You, you hustle, start. you hustle fucking hard. You start it. You just start. <laughs> this is what we learned from now our good friend. I'm going to call him my good friend. I know. He's awesome. Brandon Cohen, the CEO, mm-hmm. founder, captain fucking. of Liquid IV, which is one of our favorite companies that sponsor us and just favorite now just favorite companies in general i just love his story i love what they're doing i love their message i love his entrepreneurial advice i know i just thought he was great he's got a lot of great advice and that's the thing too like he's got he knows a lot of people he's got some funny stories he like you know all of his connections he's doing so much good around the world which he talks about which i think is great everything always kind of like circled back around to that like even though he's making millions of fucking dollars yeah but the mission is always (laughs) the same right correct yeah i think we could probably get him to party like at least one night dude he he partied with steve aoki at his fucking house with his family like come on we can get him to party Um, um he's cute and he's single ladies yeah I don't um, think he's looking for anything. He does not have time for anything, like- as he says. But <laughs> it was a fun thing. We're putting that um, after the sponsors. So stay tuned. It's actually really fun. Yeah. And, and he was really but cool. But I think, I, I, I'm curious if he personally would be proud. So within the first five years on the market, Liquid IV has grown from zero to 100 million in revenue. Right? So like, that's what I was saying to that's him. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm wondering, I, par- actually, part of me would wonder if him himself being the hustler and like hard, hard work he is, yeah. he'd be like, get it, girls, get that only fucking fan. Yeah, Where yeah. Those diapers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I bet that would be? I think he, he seemed very non judgmental, right? I know. He seemed just kind of like, do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Um, work to hard. Try and do good. If that means you're going to be doing good down the line or whatever if that does good for you or somebody else do it and he also, start and you know what he also said too is block out the fucking noise like the haters yeah. the the naysayers the oh my god oh there's already that on the market you know what i yeah. mean like i guarantee a bunch of people will be like dude there's already a ton of fucking hot bitches out there well yeah you ain't this. guess what with guess my what weirdo talent toenails just- you know what we would have to do with our <laughs> with our only feet, fans feet pictures we'd have to donate like money do you know what i mean like so we'd have to like give half of it away for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because then we could feel really but good about it. But then we would just you know up what? the price <laughs> just oh, so we yeah, could do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
once again, we're talking ourselves into it. Listen, it may happen. One of these shows, we're going to come on and be like, check out our OnlyFans. No. No. You never know. Look. You never know. Um, but that, well, that brings me into the whole, the reason why we were talking about anyway is because yeah. we were kind of getting into like really hard work, like having your own business, like yes. working hard versus versus <laughs> making like some kind of quick money with OnlyFans. Look. And not that it's not hard. Yeah. The, some of the things that, well, you know, the positions that you have to get to sometimes over the sink and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, it's yeah. really There's hard. There's a lot of yoga and stretching Yeah, involved. yeah, yeah. And, like, getting that exact right picture and stuff. Do you know how many pictures they have to take? Listen, do you know my how many God. selfies I have to take just Dude, for one? on my phone. Good one? The amount I have to delete for just <laughs> one that I'm uh, kind I'm of okay, okay with and I'm still actually not loving. Correct. Is a million. So, it's hard work. Yeah. But we were kind of contemplating, like, the hours that we're working, the blood, sweat, and tears for definitely not that amount. Yeah. Well, um, and how that's the constant thing, right? Because you and I have talked about before working your ass off, but then trying to figure out the balance between that, right? Like yes. working hard and being good at your job, and then like being present at home and being a good wife or a good mother. Being a friend even, too. And a, a good friend and like keeping in touch with your friend. <laughs> yes, it's taking care of yourself yeah like all of it is this yeah. crazy balance that brandon even was like yeah man i actually have to work hard at that he daily. has to work hard at that he also gets up at five i and know like and part of me was like good on does you. certain stuff i know like i guess I, can you program that i need to program that again yeah because in the military oh yeah when we used to like depending like in my um test parachuting job we were awake at four like i had to be in the office at four forty-five in the morning oh, so you shit i know some days yeah it was like really early sometimes and so you just get used to that or like different schools you're in yeah or working out working out at certain times like hey i gotta be up at like 5 30 so i can make it to the gym and leave by like 6 30 you know what i mean yeah and then work out by 7 30 so it was just one of those things where you got but used you, to you really can be super productive if you get a lot of stuff done before seven like i know that's I know. true i know it's true but also, like, some days seem, like, really long to me where but I'm like, sleep. but sleep. Have you ever tried sleep, dude? Because <laughs> that shit's really good, too. But I used, I think he even said it, too. I used to be able to survive on such little sleep yeah. um, beforehand and still be very, like, good at what I was doing and very productive. I, I vividly remember when I first was in Seer, like, going out and partying and drinking even sometimes during the weeknights we would all go out and like stay up super late and then you go work out really early and then be working all day and you're fine you can keep up this routine and be yeah. like, great at your job and still teach and speak eloquently but now if i don't even get a good night's sleep right or if i'm not taking care of myself i notice it in my day-to-day -day routine i'm like i don't feel sharp don't feel like oh, myself yeah. today. I feel like this. And fog. then you get in your head about it too. Oh, you really? Well, like, you beat yourself I up a little bit I more. I didn't sleep. There's no way that I'm going to feel good. Yeah. It's kind of like when I wake up, I'm like, oh, fuck. And yeah. I set myself up for that yeah. failure or whatever. Um, another thing that I kind of got triggered with before we came on, you had read in the Drinking Broettes that someone was getting a divorce after 13 years. Oh, my God. Yeah. 15 years of being together. And I, last night, I listen to podcasts sometimes to go to sleep. I just, like, uh, it goes into my head. And yeah. I'll, like, be like, why am I thinking that? Because it was, like, on You're while I was sleeping. You're sleeping. So there's this new podcast about Betty Broderick. I don't know if you've heard of this lady. Mm -hmm. She uh, She was kind of this sympathetic murderer. So she was married 16 years. Here we go. You were murdering. Murdering. <laughs> But it's a sympathetic figure in that, like, in this weird way, women were kind of like, go, girl. I don't know. So they were kind of feeling it a little bit. She had been married for 16 years. She sacrificed everything uh -huh. for her marriage, which is something that a lot of women, and I think listeners, can relate to. Once you, she was a school teacher, she had a career, and then she had kids. Mm -hmm. And you find that the daycare or what it takes for your kids to be taken care of does not match what you are making and ultimately women yeah. because of the state of how much daycare costs and it's not subsidized or whatever right now you have to give up anything everything mm -hmm. and you have to make that choice of like okay i'm giving over total control to a guy right yeah all the money making capabilities all the decisions 
whatever, whatever. I'm just going to sacrifice my life and take care of this family as my job. I'm taking myself out of the workforce. Something that you want to do. Something that you that want you're to passionate do. About. And by the way, when you're trying to get back in at 40, it's almost impossible, right? Exactly. Like if you want, if you needed to, if you get a divorce, something, and you have nothing. It is hard. So even this my, guy. Even my dad being yeah. a man and an expert in his, you know, his career career or field out. when he was older he got like laid off yeah. and then he like you know tried to go in stuff later on and they kept picking younger guys and fresher and he was like really we're an ageist society for sure. sure if you stay in the workforce that's the way to beat it but if you ever get out and especially as a woman mm -hmm. try getting back into any career yeah. as an older woman. have you seen the netflix show working moms um i saw one season my mom was watching it like um, i watched the whole thing of working yeah yeah fully the shirts and that like speaks volumes to that entire yes. premise right which damned is showing if you do, damned if you don't that like this chick was on top of her work game crushing it nonstop. she went on maternity leave right she came back and like they tried to replace her and then you know she had to juggle the mom life and the married life and her husband cheated on her because she wasn't there a lot and she mm -hmm. felt like she was missing out on her kid and people were raising it but then she all she was getting screwed at work too because she was trying to do it all yeah it was ridiculous i, I yeah. mean ridiculous as in looking at it and going that's oh my, my gosh this yep. is like crazy yeah and, and she's that, trying everything that she can mm -hmm. and you know what i mean women you know real you know relate so strongly to that yeah like, oh and i think they relate to like you know the thing of like giving up that independence as much as you're like we're in love and we're never gonna get divorced right mm -hmm. giving up that much power in your marriage which is a lot of things that it's a lot of things that women struggle with and it's a lot of our fears are based mm -hmm. in like dude, if you fucking leave, it's a no fault state. You're going to like take everything. Yeah. So this guy, uh, ultimately like after 16 years cheated and like five kids or something cheated on her with his secretary and mm. then ended up leaving her for her, moved her into the house. So basically just replaced her with yeah. a 21 year old Jesus. secretary that took her name got sole custody of the kids the guy was a lawyer so what? he really was like throwing stuff in her face making her look crazy because he was gaslighting or making her crazy sure. and then she was like leaving voice messages that was like motherfucker Fucker. like give me my fucking kids like this is you know and then he would save the message yep play he it knew exactly make, what he was doing exactly he, was a he lawyer. played all, he had all the cards lined out he knew exactly yep. what he was doing because, and she I'm was sure out of he her had house it, a fucking plan yep legit mm -hmm. written and down, she probably. was going the new girl was going to all of the galas and stuff that they used to go to all the oh events that gosh. they used to do and literally she's just watching herself replaced by a 21 year old in her entire family kids and everything and by the way too a lot of times this happens so quickly right like yeah sometimes when you figure out that the person's been cheating like you mm -hmm. are just now dealing with it and you're sitting it's there over. going like oh my gosh when that person has been over for the longest time and they can just move on with their own fucking life mm -hmm. and they're fine but you're still dealing you're with everything having... crumbling down yes. around you yes and then you kind of look like the crazy one because you're like wait wait a second like this was my whole life can you i imagine, sacrificed like, everything what everything. am i supposed to do now yeah. get a job at fucking whole food i mean i, mean, I can what? drive any completely sane person crazy right right so she got a gun went to the driving range and she would, or the shooting range, sorry. And she would tell everyone, I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to shoot him. Yep. Just learning. Cause I'm going to shoot him in the fucking head. And they're like, okay. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. No, you won't. Whatever. And shot him. Did? Went into the house, shot them both in the bed. And she's in, she's in prison. Sure, she's, of course she you is. know, it, it all happened. It all went down. But I think that it brought up and, and women can kind of, not sympathize with her killing but they feel that story to their core mm -hmm. of just like you sacrifice everything nobody has a fucking prenup nobody has these things because you just think we're in love well and people when they do bring up prenups it's like oh, oh you my know, gosh the devil you how want dare my money? you it's yeah like, you just want my money no, no. i just don't want to think about it because unfortunately at the end of the day no matter how much you love each other and no matter how strong your relationship is when feelings get hurt and people other people get involved and a passion and emotion and feelings mm -hmm. gets away. you know people do stupid things yeah and you know you still it's sad as it sounds sometimes the best person to protect you and that cares about you is you is you and you know? so you know when you're and I know there is women out there. A lot of the fights that you have with your husband, if you're not working, 
is about money and shift of power. Like, it sucks. Well, think about it, too. How many people are out there, women in particular, who are sitting there right now thinking to themselves that, like, are putting up with shit and yeah. not happy with where they're at and sit there and go, I would probably leave him, but if I did, I, but I can't because I would have nothing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because yes. They've given up their job. They've given up their life. They've given up. And by everything. the way, when he's ready, he will. But do you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And we talked about too about the the Real Housewives before, where a lot yeah. of these women are dependent upon their spouses and their significant other, significant others to give them everything. Like they were bringing in the money. Yep. And then you you kind of mentioned it, which I was like, oh my god, epiphany. Yeah. Right. These women now come into making their own money through the show or through Getting sponsorships or whatever, their yeah. own independence. And they've been just suffering in this like shitty, lifeless marriage for the longest time. And finally I was like, you know what? I can't make it on my own finally. I don't need you anymore. Yeah. And that's the reason why I put up with your bullshit anyway. Yeah. And there's some of Bye. them that do stay together. But once you get on level playing field, then you can really figure out if you do want to be together. But mm-hmm. otherwise, it's just that imbalance of power that I think a lot of people... I've been told many times before when I was working at a salon, I was told by a lot of women that Mm -hmm. I would do their hair like, do not quit your job. Whatever you do, do not quit your job. Divorced or they're going through it. They're trying to get a job now. They had three kids. Their husband left them. You know what I mean? Where they're just like, have your own money. Mm -hmm. Don't quit your job. Whatever you do. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of the way I was raised. Not in that aspect, but my dad was like, if you want stuff, you make your money. If you want to live a certain life, you make your money. Yeah. You take care of you. Yeah. You know, like not saying to don't depend on a man, but depend on you. Just make sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, make sure. Be, you I think have he was doing something. it, I'm sure, to be protective still mm-hmm. and to look out for me. He didn't full outright say, like, hey, just in case. Yeah. But it was always like, you're going to be dependent. Uh, you're going to be independent. You're not going to be dependent on someone. Yes. Because they don't want to see a dad. And my dad would say the same thing. Like, yeah. he doesn't want me to be stuck in something. Mm-hmm. And he knows because he's on that side of it, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, fi- it's very yeah, 15 triggering. years together. 13 years. And 13 years married. That's a long time. It's a long time. Oh, that makes my heart hurt a little, right? Yeah, because you don't you think- know what's going to happen. You don't like, know what's going to happen. You and I have not been married for a super long time. No. So it's like. We don't know what's going to happen in 10 years. And that's scary in 15 sometimes. 15 years. It is scary. So that's that kind of Ugh. stuff like that always triggers me a little bit and makes me be like, okay. And even what he was saying, or OnlyFans, hey, you do what you got to fucking do mm-hmm. to make sure that you have some kind of independence. Um, yeah. And that's our feminist, you know, our, our little feminist <laughs> rant go. for a second. <laughs> right? Do whatever you want to do, but sacrificing everything for family and husband and getting rid of all of it, it's a scary place to be. So see what you can do. I'm going to tell you right now, I had a friend who I think and I feel and she even kind of said that like she sacrificed a lot of who she was and like gave up everything like moving and her job and like who even who she was and. Mm-hmm. everything for this guy to kind of appease mm-hmm. his him and his family and like lost herself in the mix mix of it and then like when he went to end it which struck her like sideways she was finally was like you know this is not even who i am i haven't actually been happy and the only reason why i've been okay with it is because i want to stay with you but now yeah. i'm realizing i shouldn't have never have wanted this no and now back to being herself and being happy. And it's kind of like you have to still, it's not selfish. It's survival. It's what you need. Yeah. Right. Uh, and if someone ha- is not okay with you doing certain things to make sure that you're okay, it's not like going out all night and not yeah. being with them. Girls nights every night. Not like that, but stuff that you need. Work with you. Work with you. Realizing make sure that you can hold on to who you are. That like you still want to work and that trying to work with you to make it better. Okay, yes. it's okay. We'll get an in-house nanny. We can't yeah. do that. Okay, I'll get someone to clean the house every once in a while so you can take a break right. so you can do these things and right. these dreams. Because if he has his dreams and goals and he can meet them, you can do the same thing. Yours don't have to be put on hold either. Like right. it's, it's a relationship where you work together, yeah. right? 100% is given from each side. And yes, there's you know, gives and takes people sacrifice things, but it shouldn't just be like one person constantly sacrificing all the time. Exactly. Right. Or turns. Like I, I sort of feel like sometimes like I stayed home with my kids in the very beginning mm-hmm. and still do a bulk of the stuff because they just want mom. Yeah. And my understanding and my husband and I's understanding is like, 
when my time comes, Mm -hmm. it will. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm doing this and this. And it was I quit that job and like whatever. And once I got to a certain point was like, okay, I've done this. Mm -hmm. Now it's my turn. Right. And you kind of go back and forth of like. And it should be able to work. Should be. You know, she, when she had us, she was like still me, and my sister, the oldest one. She was still working, right? And then my dad was working more so full time, but she still wanted to work, so he was totally okay with that. Yeah. And then with the two younger ones, she decided to actually take off work. My yeah. dad was okay with that, yeah. Even though it's kind of like a financial burden in a way, like yeah. that's what she wanted to do, and that's what they agreed upon, which yeah. is fine. Then when my dad got laid off during what you know, like what was it, two thousand six, when yeah. everyone, two thousand seven, when I yeah. was getting laid off. My mom had to take on the burden of working, right? My dad was taking care of the house, taking care of the kids. Like, they switched completely different roles. It yeah. was hard for him. For but sure. guess what? Because, you know, it's but something it was very turn. new to him. Yeah. He was so willing to do it. I think he had a lot more of love and appreciation for my mom and everything she did, yeah. right? And then it had to get to the point where he had to, he had to find something and they both had to work. For sure. Because... You know, over time. Once the kids get older, happen. you do have more free time and you got to fill well, it with. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And that too, you know, I think even with him, he was like, I feel like I need to still be a man and still yeah, yeah, yeah. provide for, for the sure. family and find something. What, for right? sure. Right. And I think that's when he started his own business. So it's just one of those things like you make it work together. And right. You jive. And it's not like, no, you fucking can't. And no, you will do this. Yeah. That's not really a relationship. That's. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like being a prisoner. Or if there's something you can do. (laughs) Yeah. If there's something you can do to kind of like build a business or build an empire together. Yeah. That's really great too. But you can always make it work. You know what I mean? Try. I mean, just. Even even with me, right? I love my job and I, there were a lot of sacrifices that I made up until this point for us, for Chris and I even to be together at the same base. And I understand that there's only so much he could do. Right. And there was probably a lot, there was a lot more I could do. So I did it. And I, I will be honest, it was like really, really hard for me at first when I first moved here because I took a huge hit in my career and I had all these great opportunities extended to me and I had to sit there and go, I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this for us. Yeah. I'm doing this for us. Yeah. Right? Where he was like still private and doing mm-hmm. great. And I might. It's hard to see. It was really hard to see. It's hard to see. And so don't get me wrong. There was a few times where I was like, this is what I did. Look, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then even so more. I realized I was gonna be still gone all the time, and so if we do want to have kids and have a family, I have to be home a lot more. Yeah, one of us does, and unfortunately, it's me again. Yeah. Right, so that's why I went part time into mm-hmm. the reserves. But then again, he knows how important it is for me to work. So guess what? Podcast came. I yeah. wanted to start my own business. He's like, "Cool, don't get me wrong. There's days when it's hard because he's sure. like, holy fuck, you're busy as shit, Look, bro. I can't hang out with you.' And yeah. it's like, yeah, but it's what you do." Because he knows how important it is to me and how yeah. sane it keeps me. And if this is what I have to do, you know, to work at home for us to be together, then he's kind of like, cool. Yeah. I'm happy if you're happy. Yeah. It's hard, but you can make it work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And recognizing that, too, I think is another thing. Recognizing that that might be what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, when I wasn't working, I was just like, what's wrong? What? You know what I mean? And realizing that, like, oh, man, I just don't. I was not raised to completely give up my entire self yeah. uh, for 15, 16 years and then have it fucking crumble. And that is a fear of mine. And, yeah. it, you know, it happened with my family and all of this. So it's like I just had to know, kind of recognize that that's what it was. I think and it's a it fear keeps triggering. Of so many women. Yeah. And it yeah, keeps it is coming mean, up. Yeah. Especially. I, especially with kids. And mm-hmm. then you start to, like, make those sacrifices. And um, it's, it's hard. hard. But do, do what you can. I mean, find – Find something that's yeah. yours, whether it's twenty dollars cash at the grocery store every time you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. And here's the thing too. Put that in a can. It's okay. To, <laughs> it's, yeah, right. Just put it away. Put it away. Um, it's okay to still feel. It's okay to be sad about things sometimes. Because I'll even say this the other day. I saw one of my teammates who I graduated at SEER training with. Yeah. Um, we had. The top there, you had the top three in the class that were picked of the entire graduating class, and it was myself, uh, Baker, and Pepper. Okay. And uh, you know, Baker was my peer. We always competed against each other, yeah, right? Yeah, we yeah. were like top of the class, top of everything, the first to certify, first for everything. And um, it's hard sometimes. Yeah. When I see guys for that sure. are still in active, like you came getting the job that I should have taken, right? Yeah. And even uh, the other day I saw him, he got, um, he was getting put up for top 12 airmen of the year, which I got offered to get put into that too. Um, 
but now that I'm in reserves, I was kind of like, no, it's okay. And they're going to look into my background yeah, yeah, yeah. and podcast. I was like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But even <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to do that. But it was, it's so hard. Yeah. Sometimes because I see that. And it's normal to have those feelings. Don't get down on yourself for it. Yeah. And you kind of always will in different yeah. phases. So like, the same, like me with kids, like I, I see people out, see people without, you know, what happened? I don't was know. It Is out? that good? It was working. Okay, good. Um, I see people out. I see people still like grinding at like making films or acting or whatever. And like, I'm just not doing that anymore and like sacrifice kind of that. So it'll always be like that, the different phases in your life or whatever. Like the FOMO. The FOMO. But I do have to like remind myself that I'm pretty good. Yeah. Like we're good. And that's the thing I I thought too. Like I saw that and I was like, okay. You don't know what that life is. Yeah. And then part of me was like, I am so glad I'm not in that fucking big blue machine anymore. Just like sucking the the dick of the Air Force. (laughs) I mean, to put it bluntly. Sucking the Air Force dick. (laughs) (laughs) To put it bluntly. It's hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a political game. that Sure. I never liked playing and the whole let's go ahead and just church up my res. No. And yeah. I'm kind of and I had to be like, you know, what? I'm kind of glad I could to do a fun part of my job still and yeah. still do this. So. But yeah. it takes a second. Of course, you're it like, takes a second. You're you're like, like, you have to really moments. talk yourself down from the FOMO <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But we get to do fun stuff like talk to Brandon Cohen from fucking Liquid IV and he's cool as shit and probably party with him. What? I didn't even ask him. Do you think he's rela- related to Andy Cohen? Oh my gosh. How did I not think of this? I don't know. Okay, we're going to have to like hit up his people. He'll and be ask like, him. no. Leave me alone. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Look, I did your show, but uh, we're not friends. Yeah, no, we're not friends. I really feel like we're going <laughs> to no, hang I'm, out. Yeah. I really feel like we are. But first, we're going to get to some sponsors. First, we have strikeforceenergy.com, promo code ladyboner. You guys know what Strike Force is, you've been using it. Uh, you I'm love sure it. you used it on the Memorial Day weekend when you were day drinking because you have to. And <laughs> then you used it the next day in your water so you could get through the day. Look, Strike Force Energy. Clean. Uh, Gluten free, yep. zero calories, zero sugars. It's liquid. It's liquid. It's going to mix with anything you want and it will give you sustained, clean energy with no crash. Strike Force Energy dot com promo code lady boner don't act like you don't know what we're talking about <laughs> and if you mm-hmm. don't get cool and don't buy some loser um next up we have raycon yes we do and we love raycon we use these bad boys when we do our wine episodes at home i know clear as day uh i like the base on them do you notice that it's hard to get like a base in in an earbud that doesn't like shake around. It's kind of hard to explain, but their base. Oh, I know. Like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Where like their base in your ear is so fucking good. Their sound quality is awesome. I mean, their the sound quality is great. Point is amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be about half of what you're normally a brand that you may be thinking in your mind right now that we won't say. Yeah, <laughs> and the sound quality is way better. By way, the way better. Too. Um, and I love the fact that. I mean, we always talk about this, but this is huge for me. The interchangeable earbud sizes. Because yep. I have, we- I feel like I have weird shaped ears. How many times do you hear that, right? Oh, I can't wear earbuds because it's like, well, they don't really fit in my ear. And you're like, I think a lot of people Wait. think it's their problem when they put earbuds in. And they're like, oh, these hurt. Or like, no, yeah. it's because of the earbud size. Yes. And if it's they don't not give a you one size. alternate sizes to choose from, then you're kind of screwed. Yeah. And they give you what, like four or five. Crazy. Like four or five different sizes and you can change them out depending on like how you feel. Try different yeah. ones for running. You may want to use a more like snug one if you're mm-hmm. just hanging out, whatever. Um, it's a great company. We love Raycon and they're a little bit more discreet mm-hmm. than other earbuds that you're thinking. And they have um, like six hours playtime. Yeah. They just last a lot longer. They're an awesome product. We love them. Go to buyraycon.com slash broettes for 15% off. That's going to knock it down even further, which is amazing. Try them out. I like the rose golds myself, but a pure black on black. I feel so bougie black. with rose I know. gold. I know, but it looks so good. It, no, I love yeah. it. I love yeah. rose gold anything. I'm yeah. like, give it to me because I feel fancy. And then I have the black on blacks ones too, and I want to be like I have the white ones, which make cool. me look like I have... Ooh. You know, the pods in. I'm like, Ooh, pew, pew. good for you, girl. Right? I look fancy. Look fancy. We go to Raycon.com slash broettes. Do it, do it. 
Next up, another company <clears throat> that I am very into right now yes. and love, Sunbasket. So Sunbasket is a meal kit delivery, right? But they are a lot different and then they have more options mm -hmm. for the meals that you get. So they have like paleo, gluten-free, Mediterranean, veg vegetarian, um, any kind of dietary restrictions. Um, they have a lot more choices too. So I know you've done a couple of the other ones. We yeah. Won't and name, they have but they only have a limited choice, limited choices every week. And you're kind of like bummed because some of them are even like repetitive and you're like, Oh yeah. dude, I don't want this again. Um, so I made a filet mignon with hoist what? with, uh, was it hoisin sauce? I forget the sauce that I put. It was like a garlic Dude, sauce. Dude, they always have with like squash, the best sauces. Broccolini, that they make, yes. Right? Ooh, broccolini. Broccolini mm. with squash and almonds and like a lemon on the side. The, the best steak was part so good and organic. About these is some of them I might have made and then told Chris that I came up with. Oh my gosh, perfect. <laughs> He'll Dude, it really did look like I made it. No, I know. Because there's been times where Chris has made one and I come downstairs. I'm like, oh, my God, you made this? He's like, yeah, because of the, you know, we have it. And yeah. I was like, oh, OK. Well, I was really impressed there for a second. Yeah. But either way, it's fucking delicious. Yeah. And on top of that, it's everything that you need and you have no excess stuff like leftover, like Which half is huge chopped right onion now. and like all other stuff that, b believe me, it's sitting in your fridge just you're never you going to use you're, you're not going to use, use, use that little piece. <laughs> it's better to just have the exact right amount. Exactly. It's less waste. It was really easy. It did take like the time that it took yeah. uh that it said was like 20 minutes, 15 mm -hmm. 20 minutes. It took exactly that time. Yeah. Um everything was really even with you reading the directions like 15 times, you're like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. no." It yeah. like it still was super quick and I made like an amazing meal in seconds. Um Go to sunbasket.com slash drinkin, D-R-I-N-K-I-N, not drinkin. Get $35 off your first order, which is huge. That is. And that's nice. It's they have they have way more um selection. So they did this thing on today's show where they like went through all the different ones and Sunbasket won on organic ingredients. Dang. It won on selection of either pa like paleo, vegetarian, and it won on the amount that you have to choose from, which is, I think it's like 11 meals. Wow. Um, so they've got it all. We love Sunbasket. Thank you so much, Sunbasket, for my steak and making me look like an awesome cook. Sunbasket.com <laughs> slash drinking for $35 off. Do it. Do it. All right. Now we can get into our interview with the super fun and awesome Brandon and Brandon Cohen of Liquid IV. By the way, for us, if you go to Liquid IV, enter code, enter promo code BROET and you'll get 20% off everything in the site. We love them. He was super cool. Enjoy. <laughs> so I first, I don't know if this is how it went for you in your company. I'm sure you have a different story but so when I first heard about liquid IV it was like a year ago and it was moms in my neighborhood that we were like dude we're drinking at night a little bit we still need to get up with the kids right and one of my neighbors was like dude you have to try this this was a year ago I feel like since that mm -hmm. since I tried it it's just sort of blown up this year is that kind of the trajectory I mean I know you've been around since you know 2012 right but it felt yeah. like this year it just I see it everywhere now i love it but it's just from the moment that i got introduced to it is that sort of this year has been crazy it's it's been a crazy year there's been a ton of growth um but i you know in actuality it, i read some quote the other day like you know an overnight success takes 10 years exactly, so <laughs> exactly. i've been i've been working we've been working just as yes. hard from 2012 to 2019 for those seven years and building all the right stuff and bringing on the right people and focusing on the cleanest ingredients. And, yeah. and so what happens is you build this base, right? And I think it really starts with like the product has to be great and it really has to work. Like you can have all the right people talking sure. about it or the right marketing or whatever. If the product doesn't work, you're not going to hear about it from that mom in your neighborhood and it's not going to spread like wildfire yeah. like it has, yeah. you know? And so I think what's happened over the last year is um, that infrastructure and that base was super solid. Um, our true north of like helping the most amount of people possible, whether it's commercially with hangovers or athletes or military. And then on the flip side, we have a mission where 
you know, we donate a serving for every purchase that we get for, you know, we did a whole COVID response initiative, uh, Uganda, Haiti, Nepal, things like that. And I think that whole base is solid. And all of a sudden we did like a celebrity round of funding and like, yeah. you know, we came out with a new flavor and like we started to just add little tweaks to it and then it just went boom. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I felt that too, but it's kind of been like seven, eight years yeah, of the yeah. same thing. And it's, but it's a lot of, I'm loving it. It's just so cool that we're helping so many people. And I get to hear awesome stories like your guys's, you know? I actually yeah. first heard of it and saw it on TikTok. You've heard of TikTok before, right, Brandon? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> it started off to me as like a kid thing. I was like, who are these little teenagers beep bopping around and dancing? Sure. And this girl was showing a night drinking with her friends on this TikTok and their drinks were being mixed with liquid IV. And they were talking about how they drink that and it helps them stay hydrated, but still kind of drink in a safer manner. And then the next day they're wow. using it and literally like a plethora of people were just commenting, oh my God, I love this stuff. Oh my gosh, you use this stuff. And by the way, like when any brand or anything I see now that is introduced on TikTok, it goes viral, like it's sold out. Yeah, like instantaneously. And that's where I saw it. And part of me was like, well, I saw it on TikTok, <laughs> right? It must go. be good. And I looked it up and here we are. I'm like, there are sponsored. I was like, this is really cool. I know it really made us. I love it. It made us feel official as no. a show if Liquid IV is on. Um, and we had talked about on one show having you on and yeah. your team was like, uh, he would love to. We were like, yes. What? So we were talking about, we just. I think someone sent me. Okay. Someone, someone like sent me a clip. I was like, you know, in the middle of a crazy week and I got a clip and. And I, I just did uh, uh, Adam Carolla invited me on his podcast, yes, too, which I is saw pretty that. cool. And so someone sent me a clip and was like, dude, like these girls are talking about like they would love to meet you. I was like, let's do it. What are <laughs> we waiting Let's do for? it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what awesome. I thought. We have a lot of girl listeners and, you know, you're a young good looking CEO that's yeah. like fun you're doing like a bunch of fun stuff so I know and we saw some interviews and we we're like he's pretty cool yeah I think, and he, all, I think he can parties you know a lot of people I, you have a lot of people who have financially backed you that are like big names that are like oh my gosh how how does he know all these people and just out of curiosity we can probably get into that a little bit but just we your know collabs and stuff some that you're of your doing. bigger investors like Scooter Braun yeah. like, is he one of your buddies like do you guys know him pretty well yeah, so it's not like you know i was just like a normal i'm like a normal dude i played yeah. golf in college yeah. i started this thing and then as the, you know i think what's happened in in sort of like the business sort of pop culture is like uh you know like i think uh, athletes and celebrities want to be entrepreneurs and vice versa probably yeah yeah <laughs> and, yeah and i think that um what's so cool about that is you get these guys who have these or got you know guys and girls who have these incredible platforms who want to help the world and do good and they have the financial backing to do that. And so we just decided about two years ago, I, I got introduced to Scooter and he's been a great partner um, for the last couple of years. And then last year we were like, hey, how can we really like add some more pop to this? Mm -hmm. And we, we had a lot of people reaching out, like just because I think they were seeing the product everywhere and they were really liking it. And so we had a lot of people reaching out and we thought, what if we could... Um, you know, instead of just like doing like transactional, like influencer things, what if we could build like this team who are actually owners in the business yeah. who want to be part of this mission to, you know, to help people everywhere. And so Scooter was a big part of that just because his black book of people that he knows is pretty incredible. Yeah. And, and then I had a few just direct contacts, like Steve Aoki was a direct contact. Gary that was v. one I was going to ask about. Oh, I love Gary. By the way, love Gary V. Yeah. I've been jamming to Steve Aoki for the longest time. I've seen him in Vegas a few times. So like you Love did, it. you did a yeah, flavor so with him. We did. It was so much fun. That was, that was, that idea kind of came about from like, from Steve and it's this awesome thing that's working now, but he, uh, he invited me to his birthday at his house, which I thought was going to be like a Vegas party, but it was like family and friends. <laughs> and so I felt so special that I was oh. invited. I, and when I was there, he was like, yo, like, He's like, I, you know, he throws a cake at people's face yeah. at the end of his sets. <laughs> yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, it's a strawberry cake. And he's like, what if we made a strawberry cake flavor? And I was like, strawberry cake? Like, you know, we're like this healthy brand, but, you know, like we could try it. And so we had a couple samples made and I was like, damn, this is delicious. And yeah. I sent it to him and he's like, yo, let's do this. And so um, that was a really fun one. We did, you know, we created a bunch of content and he's just such a... Um, like truly down to earth dude. Like he's exactly what you see. So I've heard. And so working with him and pushing it out has just been, he's been an incredible partner along the way too. So yeah, I mean, all these partners, like, 
you know, they got introduced through the business. That was sort of the leverage in order to get connected. And then, you know, I think you realize just like me and our team, like we want to leave this lasting, like we have this purpose. We want to leave this lasting impact. And these guys, when you get to a certain level, they want to do the same thing in, mm-hmm. in, in one regard or another. And so, you know, we had 20 of them get involved last year and some have been more active than others. But I think the coolest part has been building real relationships with them and getting creative with how to like get more hydration or our other, you know, energy or sleep products into people's hands. Yeah, that I love that. And yeah. did you do a recent flavor kind of inspired by Justin Bieber called Yummy? Yep. Which is yep. good. So that, was a, that was a fun one. We, you know, his song came out, yep. I don't know, six months ago or yeah. something. And, and we were like, dude, that would be a really fun flavor. Like we didn't know what it was going to taste like. And we were trying to, you know, we're, we're always have different things that were in the works on. I was like, this guava hibiscus flavor mm-hmm. is really yummy and this would it's be perfect. <laughs> yummy. <laughs> and so, we, yeah, we sent it and, and we were like, let's make this happen. And so it's been a really fun one. The last, you know, three weeks of it has been the combination of like this COVID response we did, like, which is like one end of the spectrum, like donating product. And then you go to the other end of like the biggest celebrity, like ever, yeah. like pushing a product with him. And then, you know, with Memorial day, it's just been a, it's, been a really wild fun scary crazy like 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 you know a few months i'm sure oh my gosh i think you guys brought yummy back into the cool picture like yummy was like a little kid word you guys made it cool again (laughs) i'll say they're yummy and it's yummy and it's yummy what can i say um so what about this uh so the donations that you make and the things that you do charity wise what how does that come about how does that work are you donating the actual product or you do um money like, how are you how are we how does that come about or how does that work yeah we, we i i was always like i was always like when i saw brands who were donating money and it's fantastic i always had a hard time grasping on to what i was actually when i bought something yes. what i was giving money to like who knows where the money goes yeah and so my whole thing was like the idea for this product oral rehydration therapy was started in third world underdeveloped countries for people who are like dying from dehydration mm-hmm. And so in the very beginning, the roots were like, hey, like our product is, can help save lives around the world, right? It can help commercially with people like us who need it sure. to, you know, to optimize or to function better, but it can also help globally. And so, um, you know, the, the original idea was like, if we could connect our community here when they buy the product and we could give it back to people who are less fortunate, that's what we wanted to do. So it's the actual product that we send around the world. It started really, really small. Like I went to a local homeless shelter here in LA and like we donated like 500 sticks and That's it was incredible. like I was handing them out and I felt it was awesome, but I also felt sort of helpless because it was so small. Yeah. But I just trusted that as we grew the company, the platform would grow. And so through this year, I think through the end of 2019, we had donated 2 million sticks around the world, which was incredible. Wow. And then and then COVID-19 hit. And uh, well, first we went on trips all around the world, which is like, you get such perspective when you get to see people who are less fortunate and how we're helping. Yes. And then COVID-19 hit and, you know, we had all these huge partnerships where we hand out products like Super Bowl and Stagecoach and Coachella and all that just turned off. Right. And so we were like, you know, how can we help? I, you know, our true North has changed the world, help people everywhere live better lives. Like how can we, the people who are going to save our lives on the front lines, like how can we help? And we started having people reach out to us, um, you know, nurses, doctors, hospitals. And so we started taking the sticks because we had them when they weren't going to be used. We didn't, it wasn't like some, we didn't know what we were going to do with them. We're like, what if we make little kits and get them to the front lines? We'll figure out what the business piece of it is later, like how it makes sense for us. Yeah. And and we just started getting it out. And then we realized, hey, you know what? If we get this product to the front lines, like it's going to be another way to sample our product and it's going to be helping so many people. And all of a sudden we put up one social media post and it went totally viral. We got like in like, the, like one week, we got over 3000 requests from doctors and hospitals wow. around the country. We, we ended up donating over 2.3 million sticks to over 2000 hospitals. And the coolest part about it all is we were able to help all these people and they were so grateful. They, you know, they have this PPE that was very limited in the beginning. Yeah. And so they weren't drinking enough water. And so they were like, you know, the liquid IV helps. So we don't have to, you know, we can only take our mask off once or twice. And then we had, you know, nurses reaching out saying they were exhausted because they were working 13, 14 hour shifts. And so our energy product was helpful. So we made these kits with our energy, our hydration. And then also at the end of their shifts, dealing with these life or death situations, they couldn't fall asleep. They were like wired. So our (laughs) sleep product was helping. So we put these kits together 
And it was like the craziest response. It was like so cool because we just did it because like we wanted to help yeah. and they spread it like to everybody. We had this whole new market of people trying our product and like it was better than any other marketing we could have done and we were helping more people. And it just shows like when you do the right thing, like it's always good for business. You know, it's good business as well. Absolutely. Oh, At the end that. of the day, no matter what, when you do the right thing, it's always going to work out in the end. For right? enough, it will work out eventually. For Absolutely. enough time, right? You've been trying to do the right thing for That's incredible though right? because these people who are essential workers, any little bit helps. And I'm sure that was something major that was, you know, really like positively affecting their lives during that time. Just yeah. even something. Yeah. Not just the sticks, it was also like, you know, they would be like, thank you so much for thinking of us. Like yes. it was like the psychological the piece, you know, it was just so cool. The, the 360 opportunity was just incredible. That's yes. amazing. Well, I'll say this. So you were nominated for the Forbes 30 under 30 social entrepreneur list. Um, you started at a young age and you've had such great success. So you know, there's people out there who want to be successful, who might be starting their own businesses, maybe who are, are, you know, doing their own thing, whatever it might be. Do you have any words of wisdom, any nuggets, you know, that you can kind of contribute to your success or any advice that you can give anyone who's starting in anything or wants to be, you know, successful in life? I love the opening because it's a perfect example for this answer, which is somehow it got on the internet that I was nominated for that, which is true. I was denied when I was 29 mm. from that list before Liquid IV blew up. Wow. And oh. so now I'm 32 and we have one of the fastest growing wellness companies in, you know, in the country. Yeah. And uh, so it just goes to show you like, like you're going to have failures. You're going to have setbacks. Like people aren't going to believe in your vision. I mean, when we got started, like I had friends who literally, when I decided when I was 24 to do this versus like go back to school or something, like I had them like literally laugh in my face. Like, why would you do that? There's already Gatorade. And, and like, you know, now you fast forward eight years and, you know, even, even just three years ago, I got denied from that, from that list. And so part of it is like, you just gotta have so much belief in yourself and, and what you're doing and, and the vision for the future that like, you just don't hear all the noise because there, everyone from the sideline can say whatever they want. And, and, and it's just, it's the people in the arena. Like you guys mm -hmm. have created this incredible platform to tell stories and to positively affect people and bring entertainment to people's lives, right? Like mine was bringing hydration and wellness to people's lives. And all the noise was just like, it didn't, some people it like motivates, it, it motivated me in a way, but really it was just like, I wasn't going to waste any of my energy on listening to any of that. And so I think to round it out, my, my, probably my, the thing I tell like young entrepreneurs who reach out all the time is like, like you just got to start, like starting in and of itself is the momentum that you need to like achieve your craziest dreams. Like, you're never going to have the perfect amount of money. You're never going to be yes. in the perfect relationship. You're never going to be in the perfect place in your life, family, job, whatever it is. Like you got to eventually, you got to plan, you got to be thoughtful, but eventually you got to take that leap and just like go head down. And like, like, and you guys probably know this, but like you have to work so relentlessly hard in order to fight through all that crap. Because if you're really going to start something from nothing, it is like the most insane, uh, the most insane thing to try and do. It's yeah. literally insane. Until now, it's like, oh, it's like genius, but it's oh, insane yeah, yeah, for eight yeah. years until it's not. Yes. Yes. And not listening to the noise. Yeah. I liked that part. Like the list, Forbes, you're like, that could get some people down or people talking on the internet or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. That head down. Just do it. Keep going forward. Right. Yep. This can apply to anyone, like anyone in life with anything that you have going doing on. anything. Yeah. Um. So I'm having problems with balancing my work, business, starting this company, mm. and personal life or downtime or anything. Do you have? Do you do that? I read an article that you kind of had a little bit of advice, or you have a routine for your day to kind of balance out. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I struggle with that all the time. It's right? probably like the hard, hardest thing I struggle with because I'm so passionate about what I'm doing and I'm so clear on where we're trying to get. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have the problem of like, I need to push myself to work harder. Like <laughs> I literally have the ability yeah. to wake up at 5 a.m. and work till midnight without stopping. Like I, I, I don't, you know, I don't have like a girlfriend. I don't have like anything right now that stops me from doing that. Right. And when I was 23 or 24, 25, 26, I could get away with that and still function. And as I've gotten a little bit older, like 
I just, I can still do it, but I realized how much less productive and creative and um, just efficient I am when I, when I don't um, have some balance in my life. So yeah. I actually have to work really hard to create the balance. And so the way I do that <laughs> yep. is like my routine in the morning is super important. Like I just, I immediately, when I wake up, I just do 10 minutes of meditation, which I used to laugh at. And now I'm a huge proponent of it, Yeah, but it just sort of like, it immediately, like I, I sort of get settled in the day and I create like two or three intentions that I write down that are like high level, little like mini guidelines for the day based on my calendar, based on how I'm feeling, things like that. And then like, I just have to work out. Like I just, even if it's something small for me, like getting outside and just like sweating and, 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 and getting my mind off of business stuff. And so, and then I, I get some emails out really early to get the team going. Um, but just by doing like these, like, you know, then I take my vitamins and I have like this weird like routine, but it's more about like, I, once I take care of myself and I know that I'm good, mm -hmm. right. Like I get like one, two, three, four, five wins in the morning, all of a sudden I have some momentum for the day. And like, I've realized that I have crap flying at me from everywhere throughout the day. And when I don't do that, which I still often somehow I don't do, cause I think I got to wake up and start working. I'm very easily pushed off balance, mm -hmm. right? I get like my equilibrium is off. But when I do these four or five things that get me some momentum and I'm clear on my intention for the day, I get something out of left field or it comes to, and all of a sudden I get hit and I'm like, okay, got it. That's not really important yet. Let me focus on this. And so for me, like that routine is like the number one thing for my balance. And, and then it happens again at the end of the day. So I'm still working 12, 13 hours a day, but I just, I, I have these things in the morning during the middle of the day at lunch. And then at the end of the day, and if I do that, I'm just so much more efficient and productive. Absolutely. Do you, do you, you relax, you. Brandon? Do you like golf? Do you like <laughs> party? Do you he do parties any? with Steve Aoki. I know, but. <laughs> What do you what do you yeah. do when you're like I'm not anything I'm not work I'm not routine What is it? Yeah, I, I, it's funny you say golf. I, I play golf in college, so yeah, I still yeah. like my Saturday Saturday or Sunday. Like I love to just get out and get to the course. Okay, you know I I, uh, I have a, a relatively small group of friends who understand like what we're building and yes. our understanding of my sort of like. Uh, for lack of a better word, flakiness. Dude, <laughs> um, I think that's important. That's yeah. seriously important. Because people not, can get mad at you. Pressure. Yeah, people get mad at you if they're... We've said it on this show before, too. Like, it's hard to hang out with people that are bored all the time, right? Yeah. Because they get mad at you for not having any time. And you're like, hey, bro. Totally. <laughs> it's know? good when they can be understanding. And, right. And take, you know, you when they got you. Yeah, and then, or like you said, surrounding your yourself with people that are kind of on a similar path in a way that we're all like look we're busy I know that you only have a little bit of time let's just make it good we're not going to fill it with drama or whatever because you all know that you have this precious amount of time on Saturday right so you golf golf you know uh hike with some friends you know obviously this is pre-covid stuff yeah, yeah, yeah um and and yeah like I you know if I can get one night on the weekend where I like you know, like dinner out with friends or, hang, you know, doing something that's, you know, something that's social. Yeah. I, I, I had fun. I had fun back in my day. I, I'm super focused on what we're doing right now. Yeah. And so, um, but, but I, again, it's really, it's part of my weekly routine is like, I got to have that disconnection for, even if it's just a night, because um, it just, it, I'm so much more uh, just valuable to, to, to what we're building during the week when I do that, you know? You got to be able to take care of you yeah. before you take care of anything else. Yeah. That's, you know, because so you're the one running it, right? So if you're falling apart, everything else kind of around you will kind of do the same. This makes me feel. It sounds so simple. It, it sounds, sounds so simple. So, it's so hard. But it's like, it's so hard. <laughs> it is. I know. Well, everyone's like, it's just easy. Just balance. It's like, it's not that it's easy. Not like easy, balance dude. sounds easy. easy and it's great. I know. It's, it is. You have, I think we're finding out too. There's a, it's a constant, you have to work for it. You have to work at it. Just like relationships or anything else. Right. And I've called, yeah. I've called a couple of people when we were starting this company and been like, Hey, I'm, I think I'm going to be a bad friend for a little while. Like, that's just what it is. I'm sorry. Like, I'm telling you up front, but I'm, I'm just going to be a bad friend because I won't be there for you as much. You know what I mean? I need to do so many totally. other things, but that's good advice, I think. So you keep, you've mentioned a few times some of your big goals, right? And things that you're striving for. Can you share with us some of the things that some, you have on you the know, horizon? Like, things that you want your brand or your company or even just you to reach in the future? Yeah. In terms of the company, um, 
I, you've heard me say it a couple of times. We call it CTW or change the world. I have this tattoo on my wrist. Yes. CTW. So it's two part. One is creating the best products to help people all the time, you know, commercially buy the product in their life. And so, you know, we have our hydration product, which is always going to lead what we do. And then sort of these hydration based other products, like our energy product is doing incredible. We have a sleep product and then I can't disclose a few of the other ones, but we're working on a few other that will really round out like 360 our brand. And so globally, I want to have these products that help people live the best version of themselves and the best version of their life. And then on the flip side of that is like, as that platform grows, we get to continue to help people who are less fortunate with our give back mission, which we've talked about. And then our sustainability mission, which we haven't really talked about, but we're working really hard on some really cool sustainability initiatives, um, you know, with packaging yeah. that's biodegradable or other things like that, uh, which I think is really important. So that's on the business side, sort of the commercial with the give back and sustainability and being a global 360 degree wellness brand. Mm -hmm. And then on the personal side, I just realized for me, what I love, like what lights my soul on fire is like, I, I love, like we said, helping other people, but personally like inspiring others. And so, um, you know, through just like our story and, and, and I've just been through so like a lot of challenging situations and, um, and I, am hoping that, you know, as I continue to do more stuff like this and more opportunities like that, I just, there's so many people reaching out on social media or through liquid IV channels or whatever, who need advice, they want guidance, whether it's business or personal or whatever, um, entrepreneurial, like, I just think that just by like sharing more, um, I'm hoping that it can help a lot of people like personally. So yeah. that's sort of like my personal side thing. And then, and then the global, the global, uh, you know, 360 hydration slash wellness brand is, is the other piece. I love okay. it. Do you talk to Gary V? You guys talk a lot? Cause I feel like there's a lot of things that you say that I'm like, that's totally, that's you were totally on his, his stuff. Were you on his podcast? Right. I was, yeah, yeah that so was like, awesome. I don't know, maybe like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's awesome. He, he's super, uh, um, you know, easy to get a hold of. We, we, we recently with everything going on, it's been a little less sure. frequent, but like the first like six, nine months before this all happened, we were like, I mean, we were on text calls, FaceTimes all the time, like talking through different ideas, whether yeah. it was like direct to consumer strategy or like, you know, uh, he has a speaker series that he wanted to bring me in on just other cool opportunities like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we obviously, when we get in a room, it's like, it's like rapid fire. I, like, like, I you feel like you guys are on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys definitely so have a like, very similar mindset with things. And even just your advice. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, yes. I yes, like yes, yes. it. Yeah. We get pumped. We're like, we're going to start. Well, um, I, don't, I get I don't, fired up too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get fired up listening to you guys talk about you starting your business. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if you have this on the horizon. And this is just like. I don't even know if this is possible, but I'll tell you right now, just from a consumer standpoint, you kind of even just mentioned in your day-to-day -day routine that, you know, you, you work out, you take your vitamins and stuff. One thing I'm really, really, really bad about is taking vitamins and trying to choke down like all the different multivitamins and whatever you have to. I know you have a lot of stuff in powdered, you know, all your stuff's basically in powdered form. Um, like your sleep and the recovery and even energy. I don't know if there's a way to make a powdered multivitamin because in all honesty, I just love to drink this stuff up, you know, and just yeah. gulp it down. It'd be a lot easier because I'm drinking water. Any I don't know if you guys have anything, but that I would love that. Just saying. Just no, no comments. I can't, <laughs> no, I can't uh, reveal any secrets. I know. But well, you said just, stuff. Uh, that was like the first stay, thing that popped in tuned. my head. Yeah. Because I was like, this would be amazing. It, figured, it feels like something you guys would probably do. Um, well, so, we, yeah. we just love your product. And um, we know our listeners are really going to like you and your story and just your passion for giving back and the everything. And um, we thank you for supporting the show as well. Like It yeah. helps for us and our listeners if they, they know to support you guys because you supported us. So we just appreciate well, it. I yeah. I love what you guys are doing. It, it's really cool. And I mean, it's just so you guys know on the flip side, it's like, uh, you know, we have when people purchase on our website, uh, they'll like list, you know, where they heard it from. And I love when they when they mention your guys' podcast and they'll say like, they talked about it. And so I wanted to buy it. Or yeah, like yeah. on social media, we'll get like tagged in comments where they're like, I heard about it here. I, yes. you know, and it's just it's so cool to hear to hear stories they're like, no, I heard about it from from you guys and it's just it's cool it's cool how it all works together yeah well, yeah we definitely love you guys and I think that the listeners 
realize that. So, yeah. And they love we talked about it. Too. Yeah. There was a lot of people who were like, oh my gosh, I've been using this for the longest time before they even sponsored you. This is so great. So um, actually, I have one more question for you. You said Arizona Diamondbacks baseball team. I know you did. You said you played some baseball back in the day. Is that, is that yep. your team? Is like is that the team you root for? Arizona Diamondbacks? I'm an L.A. boy. I, I'm like okay. born and raised in L.A. So yes. I, I, uh, I'm i like a diehard Lakers fan. Like my whole life I've been going to games with my dad. I, I'm pretty much an L.A. sports guy. But when I graduated so from Angels? school and I really didn't know what I was – I was going to – not Angels, Dodgers. <laughs> Dodgers. 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 Oh, okay. Dodgers. Well, I had to make careful. sure. <laughs> whoa, whoa, well, whoa, whoa. You what stole? about you guys? Uh, I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. So Angels stole a pool hole. So I'm a little bitter about that. No. I don't want to <laughs> tell – I don't want to tell you. Why? Well, my family's from New York, so uh, Yanks, uh, Yankees, Yankees. Got it. Look, it's a yeah. got, got it. it. He said got, got it. it. Noted. He noted. said noted. All good. <laughs> it's all good. Got it. He's gonna get off and be like, <laughs> no more sponsoring <laughs> the bro as that. Um, are you? Yeah, we're <laughs> Yankees fan. We're yeah, done. done. <laughs> Cut off. I had to ask. It's all are you in? Fun. Um, are you in Manhattan Beach right now? Segundo, so our, oh, okay. our office is in El Segundo. Beautiful. Since it's kind of quiet. No one's coming in. I'm just like uh, to get out of the house. Sometimes I've been coming in. Yeah. When I you know go on different shows or just to like break up the you know the at home stuff. So yes. yeah, I'm in El Segundo, but grew up in South Bay, like Manhattan, and uh, and then yeah, I live in Playa Vista Marina area now. So yeah, it's good. Nice. Love it. Well, where are you based? We're in North um, Carolina right now. Yeah. We're moving cool. our our operation towards uh, Austin though. How do you feel about it? Austin, Texas. Love Austin. Love it. Love it. I like North Carolina too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had great experiences there, golfing and like different business trips, but Austin is like, even your set just looks like Austin to be honest with you. Like I feel like, I mean, I I was actually surprised you didn't say Austin when, (laughs) when I asked. It See? looks like Austin. Yeah. You know, you know. This is a very, this is a yeah. guy's set too, though. It's very manly. You very know, like manly like set. Wood and yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. So, well, thanks so much, Brandon, it. for coming on. Yeah, we, we really it. appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Guys, and maybe thank we'll... you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. It's awesome to awesome to chat. And uh, yeah, well, let's keep doing some cool stuff together. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. When we're in Austin, we're never pretty cool uh, setup. So come on down and party. I would love that. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll come out. We can do a live podcast and we'll have some fun yeah. in Austin. Yeah, maybe, maybe throw some liquid yeah. IVs. Maybe one day he can I name a it. flavor Big to Energy. What? what? No, I'm kidding. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Okay. I hear you. I, I see you. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Talk Thank soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl on yeah, don't y'all better things to do, yeah, go buy some fucking shoes, yeah, you're irritating, irritating, you're irritating.